from beautiful Bryant Park, Midtown New York, Seoul. And congratulations to the Bryant Park, uh, New York City Park Association for winning the bid that we would film our show over here today. Preview show for week one of YMSL, which is all of a sudden here. We went away for Passover, we come back and boom, we're just days away from opening day. How does it feel as a player that on, I don't know, three to four days from now, you are playing softball and softball counts. It warm, it feels great, it's good to be here. Uh, as the carousel whisks by on our left, the softball's on our lines, and uh, you know what, something about opening day that I think is especially significant is the fact that you see those that worked in the off season and those that didn't. Yeah. Week one's a big day for those that have been hitting the cages for the last month, throwing on the beach, throwing on the, in their backyards, you know, really working on their games. You see those people come out and say, hey, those guys are gonna have a big year. And on the flip side, you see the other guys that just said, ah, I'll just pick it up next year when they lost in the first round of the playoffs last year. And those guys are the guys that start 0 for 8 with three errors. So, so no, a, a few things on that point. Time. A few things on exactly that point, because you also get the wake-up call from people that say, I've been working all offseason, I'm batting 500 this year, I'm not losing a game this year, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then when they play the real YMSL uh, competition, they some of them come down to earth. I'm not great with predictions on opening day. I've never been great at opening day. Oh, I, I've never been great at predictions in general. No, you no. even got banned off the show last year. Hopefully you have a better year this year. I think but, I will. Um, but we're going to give you a new shot. It's opening day for all of us. So um, maybe you'll do a little bit better this year than you have in the past. Um, but I, I always... I've been pretty damn good when we get to week four, five, six, seven, when we learn how the teams are coming together, when we see certain things. So right now, every, everyone's zero and zero, but you know what? You can't take too much time this year because just like last year, only five teams make the playoffs this year. So it's not going to be good if you're a Lumber Kings type of team that starts one and seven. It's going to be that much harder for you to make the playoffs. Um, as it should be, as should it should start one and seven in a fourteen game season, and have the opportunity to make the playoffs. I was on that Lumber King team. Yes, phenomenal run we had. Uh, but you know what's you amazing? Get going. Amazing about that team is that we had um, like a three way tie, a four way tie, or something crazy. We needed extra games in that year, and last year we also needed extra games. So in the first year really eight teams out of eight made the playoffs. Yeah. They all had a chance when the regular season was over. And last year, even with the five-team format, basically six made it. We played that Tuesday night game to seven get it down to five. Right. Exactly. So, right, seven teams were in action. That's so, the uh, NRJ era. No one's ever out. No one's ever Unless out. Unless you're on it's that crazy. abysmal rough and rowdy team. Abysmal. And thank God the Sonny and Abe Cohen managerial duo is behind us. Never to be seen again. What a terrible way to end that managerial mark. Um, interesting thing about this year, 2021, Soul, is so many new pairings that we haven't seen before. I've never seen Zach with Jimbo before. I've never, like, I think of Zach and I'm thinking of Farka, I'm thinking of Yadid. I've never seen that, that, that combination before. The Jack Abadi team with his friends, Mark and Solomon Fallis, all of a sudden you throw A.B. Pitcher Cohen on that team. You have some gazy um, marriages here. Dano went rogue and drafted best player available at each spot and over overlooked some of his own personal friends in order to get what he felt was the best player. And what you end up with is what I think one of the best rosters, but so like you gotta see if they actually gel together or not. You know what, Norm, it's a good point, but think about it, we're, we're three years into your uh, commissionership. Yes. And so prior to that, every every draft was basically done before the draft even started. There yeah. were around five or six drafted players on each team before everything. So the first two years, everyone seemed to figure it out. You know, I'll draft my, my one guy, my two guys, you know, and it's proven not to work. You got to pick the team. You got to pick give your chance, the best chance to win. And I think this year is the first year that that's truly embodied. You know, each captain said, you know what? He's my friend. I'll see him. When I'm on second running and he's on second catching, <laughs> why do I need? I don't need to be uh, on the same team as him. You know, and I think that's gonna be that's gonna show itself this year. I think that all the teams this year it's gonna be a very stacked standings. I don't okay. think there's gonna be a bomb team. I don't think there's gonna be a, a swimming team. Right. It, it, it does seem to be very balanced this year. Um, let's start on Fireman's East. 
because we have to mention Fireman's East is Mike Usamano's field. Uh, that's where he was umping all of last year. And this year he was ready to go for all of this year at Fireman's East. Rusamano obviously is, is basically fighting for his life right now. Um, he went through hell, but he survived. What they're saying is the worst of it. He went through, while we were going through the three day, you know, the first half of Passover, Shabbat, two days of Passover. He went through an extremely dangerous and risky eight hour heart surgery wow. that they were not sure if he was gonna make it or not. Thank God he made it. There were some other issues after. He had to be put on a ventilator. And obviously everything I'm saying, I got permission to share, but he's doing a little bit better now, but he needs our prayers. Mike, we love you. We need you back. Um, but so so we'll all, we'll do a couple of things this year to um, give Mike, the, you know, to show Mike our love, to show Mike our support. And hopefully at some point this year, he can show up to a game or two and, um, you know, show his face. Let's right, see. It would be great. Yeah, great wishing him Mike. a full recovery. So Fireman's East, we have Time, which is Zach Eskenazi's team, Time, yes. And that's your squad. That is my squad. That's, he went with Jimmy. He then went with Shimmy, Aharon. Um, and later on, he took the one and only Saul Towel, pick number 64 overall. Um, so he's got his Nate Batesh and Jigga. That's the only thing that's similar to the past. And then he went in a very different direction. And he's facing the Aces, which is Max Yudit. Max Yudit on the bump at the captainship of Ike Mavora. Um, so... Mavor has got a, a very interesting team. I think he has an awesome infield, an iffy outfield. Um, what do you think of this ball game, Saul? You know, Norm, not to uh, pour gasoline on this fire about three eight, but despite the fact they were playing them, I don't like this Aces team. Wow. I don't. I don't think it's all that good. I don't. I don't love their offensive production. So you're showing and up hot this year. I, I'm showing up hot. Yeah, you're and, showing and, up hot this and, year. I mean, listen, I think. They have Max Deed, which is the top two pitcher in the league, and right. can win any game single-handedly any day of the week. Yep. But I don't think this is a team that Max has ever been on in, in, in the sense where, you know, he had some complementing offensive powerhouses surrounding him. Uh, I think this is more of a uh, one-hit team that Max was on uh, two years ago, and that team, you know, struggled. He gave up no runs, but that team struggled. Yeah. Um, so... I don't, I'm not so impressed by the Mavora squad. Then again, I do respect Mavora as a softball mind a lot. So I think that, you know, they'll hit their stride. I don't think they're a day one winner at all. Okay. Your prediction? I'm going time to sweep. Time, time to sweep. To behind sweep. the uh, strong arm of El Jefe and uh, its battery mate, Jigga. Okay. Time so to sweep. Um, I am going to go with a split over here because I think. Um, I, I think uh, it's very hard to sweep Max Hadid, although if you're gonna do it, now's the time, opening day, maybe he's a little bit rusty and everything. Um, I have to see Joey Cohen. I don't know what I'm getting with Joey Cohen. I didn't see the Cyclones team. I don't know how good he is, how bad he is. I think he's a huge X factor for that team because if they're putting him at short or if they're putting him at short center, if they're even playing with a short center, where Eddie Rishti goes on this infield, I think they have a phenomenal infield, an iffy outfield, and Max Hadid. I mean, Max Hadid with a strong infield is, is very tough to beat. So I'm going to go with a split over there. I like time more than most people around the league like them. A lot of people think Zach screwed up his draft completely. I'm a huge believer in Shimmy Cohen. Um, Aharon Cohen last year opened up a ton of eyes. Um, Jimmy is a phenomenal hitter, and Zach can take over a league, as we saw last year. So I'll go with a split over there. Um, let's go over to Fireman's West, which is to the moon, Mo Haber against Jack Abadi and the Kakambas. It's a very it's a very good matchup, this Mo Haber versus Jack Abadi. I like it as a week one matchup. I really like the Mo Haber team. I think that he just drafted great. Um, Abadi's team is, is very good too. This is a tough one, Norm. I ha it seems like a tailor-made split. Um, and that's what I'll go with. I'll, I'll go with a split. I'm not known for my split takes, but I think um, that's where I'm leaning. What do you think? No, no, I just feel like they need to come together. Um, you know, Michael Cohen is starting this year from the beginning of the year. Let's see how he hits out of the box. I mean, he was surprised that he got drafted in the second round, not in the first two or three picks overall. Maybe he's putting a little bit too much pressure on himself. 
Um, you know, Shalou has been great, but he hasn't been that player that's, you know, top, automatically the top player in the league that's, you know, winning every year like he was his first three years. He didn't do anything on Mean Machine. Last year, he played well, obviously, on the World Series team, um, the, the A.B. Sacker squad. But, um, you know, I need to see this team come together. I have questions maybe about Ralph Hannon on the mound opening day. They drafted him pretty early. Um, I was surprised at how quickly they took him. And I don't like Haber's draft, the second half of it. Norm, there is a man doing Mo Haber-like exercises <laughs> right in front of us. Uh, I love it if our producer can yes, we'll, flip we'll, this camera we'll here. We'll get a picture on your I don't know phone. if you remember that video of Mo Haber doing stretches. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, we got it. That is exactly what is happening yeah, here we got it. Brian Park. We got it. We we're going to have to talk to the it's, uh, it's Brian Park. It's softball season. So. We're going to have to talk to the Brian Park authorities about creating a barrier <laughs> for us to do this show. You know, they did win the bid, so they deserve uh, for us to be doing the show here. But, yes, we're going to need to set some guidelines. Um, I mean, this is preposterous. Yeah, the Hukambas, by the way, They've been in uh, preseason mode since last offseason. I mean, they've been working out daily. Jack of bad, he does not have a dot of body fat on him. Unlike me, folks, I'll be losing 15 pounds over the course of this season from what you're seeing now. These beautiful, cute cheeks, they're gonna be going away. This gut belly over here, that's gonna be going away. Jack of bad, he's a little yes, bit ahead of me. Yes, that is able to be wagered on at the Jimmy Malak <laughs> Sportsbook. The yeah. over under is 14 and a half. Please reach out to Jimmy. Uh, if you'd like to place that wager. Let's go to the um, unbelievable pitching matchup we have this week. You gotta believe Nabi and his squad against Cherokee's tribe, Abe Saka. This is gonna be on Oceanport 2. Um, these two guys faced each other two years ago. Lumber Kings against SmackDown opening day. Yes. Lumber Kings should have swept Nabi that week. And, and yet, both games yeah, were robbed in the last inning. And Navy went 2-0 and and ended up being the one seed, never looked back. And uh, and Abe Sacco and Owen Tewin was that Lumber Kings team that we spoke about. Um, so this is, again, opening day matchup between Abe Sacco and Navy. What a treat our schedule makers give us here. Who do you like in this game? Seems it's always that A.B. Sack and A.B. matchup yeah. uh, to start the season. It's really going to come down to, you know, who's the hot hand that day. You know, both phenomenal pitchers. I got to say, though, I got to say, though, I'm loving the Navy captain shtick. I think he's going to come out. I know sometimes he's known to come out a little bit slow out of the gate and then ramp up to be the best pitcher in the league. I think as captain, he can't allow that to happen because he needs to build up his team with him. I think he's going to come out firing. I'm going to take Navy to sweep here, and I'm going to make a second prediction that in both games, Navy holds them to under three runs both times. Wow. So that's a strong uh, Navy prediction there, Norman. I mean, who wants to face Navy week one when he's humming? And you're first batting for the first time. And again, we had no week off. To, sometimes we start before Passover, then we take a break. Sometimes we have the, a couple of days in between. This year, you're getting off the flight if you went away, and boom, you're in opening day, and now you're facing Navy. Maybe it's the worst thing you could do. I remember Louis Shalom on the Lumber Kings as a rookie, in his first at-bat, struck out swinging on three consecutive Navy pitches. I don't know if you can pull up that video. I have the video. Of course I can pull like, it up. Uh, not the first and definitely not the last. Yes. Welcome to the league. Yes, yes. Uh, You're putting me on the spot to find this video that's, now. But, that's what you can expect. But I do have that maybe video. Maybe on opening day. Yeah. Um, you know what? I really like Cherokee's Tribe. I didn't like it at draft day, but I sort of like it the more I look at it. This team is strong. This team is really, really strong. Um, you have a lineup of Bub leading off, followed by JT. Then you go into Alley. Elliot Saka, Mo Cass, Avi. Avi's a top number six batter in this league. You have Jackie Eshko, you have A.B. Saka himself. This is a lineup that could bother A.B. and make him work. And as we saw, Jacob deGrom can't pitch more than 77 pitches opening day. No, A.B., if, he, if they're fouling more pitches, you know, is gonna, I think this is not a good lineup for Navy to face on opening day because I really think these are tough outs, all of them. I like Cherokee's Tribe, and I'm gonna go crazy prediction here. Cherokee's Tribe to sweep Navy, and you gotta believe. 
Why? Because they'll score a couple of runs and Navy's team is gonna struggle to score this year a lot. Glad we are on the same page today. <laughs> really okay. glad. And now let's go to the Knights. Everyone touting their draft. This is where the World Series was played last year on Oceanport One. You have the Knights, Joe Eshko's squad, um, who, uh, you know, he obviously has Farka and Beta and stud after stud after stud. His lineup, you want to talk about a long lineup, it's this lineup. There are no outs in this lineup. You have Max Sutton batting in the, I don't know, fifth, sixth spot of a lineup. That's crazy. Um, you also have Saban batting fourth or maybe even fifth, depending on how they do this. This is an unbelievable team, but you do have Leo on the mound against Dano and threat level midnight. Dano, th these might be the two best drafted teams in the league, in my opinion. It's funny you say that because it, the teams are very similar. Mm -hmm. And Eddie Harari, no experience pitching the YMSL. Yeah. Um, but I did see him in this all-star game. Yeah. Uh, and he was phenomenal. Downright phenomenal. Uh, not to say that translates to opening Phenomenal day. Phenomenal means what? Who, is he A.B. Saka? Or is he Mikey Shalom? Or is he better than one, worse than the other? Is he... Uh, what are we talking about here? I can't go out here and just say... I can say he pitched like A.B. Saka for a day. I'm not out here calling him A.B. Saka. Right. I'm seeing him pitch one nine-inning game in a spring training. But you're saying he was throwing an A.B. Saka-esque type of ball. He was throwing hard. Type of ball. I was actually catching him. Yep. And he had a few strikeouts. He gave up basically no runs. I don't remember how many. Basically no runs to a potent lineup against him. Of yes. Just it was an all eight, nine all stars. And you know, so that was very encouraging. I remember Dano when he heard that was was through the roof. <laughs> yes. Um, but okay. then again, it's a great game. You want to make your prediction, Norm? I, I gotta go split over here because I think Michael Beta is gonna be great this year, but it's opening day and he hasn't played in five or six years. He's done BP, he's done batting cages, he's done whatever he can do, but it's his, it's his first game. We gotta give him some time. Um, also, Joe Esco didn't start well last year. He was a little slow out of the box. That great, great cold-blooded team, best roster in the league with Leo. Started one and three last year, if you recall. Oh, and three, actually. Yes. Um, so I, I don't know if they're going to just charge out to a four and oh start. Um, and I love Dano's team. I love Dano's team, but I'm saying this not knowing the pitcher. But if everyone is telling me how good this pitcher is, I think I think this could be a World Series preview, this game, on opening day. It really could be. Um, I think it could be, which would be shocking because you have neither of the top three pitchers in this matchup. Um, but I'm going to split over here simply because I just don't know, and there's too many great players on both sides. I'm, I, you know, you got the Joe G, you got John uh, Eliazar, you got Beta and Farka and all these studs on both sides of the aisle over here. I don't know how, I don't know how it's going to play out. I'm going to split just to do a cop-out. I hear you, and I, as you were talking, I flip-flopped both times. Okay. And I'll tell you where I landed. Okay. Uh, I'm landing on a Knights sweep, and okay. I'll tell you why. Okay. The reason is that, like you said, this threat level midnight team depends a lot on Eddie Harari. Yeah. I think week one of his first YMSL season, it's going to be very hard to win game one. Against the it's, best lineup against of the a, league. Against a tremendous lineup, you know? And listen, I'm not saying they're not going to be the best team in the league. That, they may build to that. I don't think it's a it's a week one winner, per se. Um, okay, well. So I'm going to go with a Knights sweep. That, that's giving Leo Cassin a sweep. So again, he's going to have to not walk the... Uh, not walk the cows home, Norm. But yeah. uh, if he if he can keep it in the strike zone, uh, the Knights have the best lineup in the league. And For as good as the Knights are, they only have two semi question marks, but they're the two most important positions on the field. You can say Joe Eshko. The real question mark is Leo at and pitcher. Leo. He could blow up a team that's phenomenal if he pitches like he pitched last year, and not like he pitched on the Walkers. And the other one is not really a question mark, but it's Joe Esco. Joe Esco is a phenomenal player. I, I I wish I had his talent and everything. I love him as a person, a player, a captain. But, you know, I don't know if he's at that top, top level of shortstop, you know? So those are the two semi-question marks, and they're the two most important positions on the softball field. So there is an opening. Like, it's not like, oh, the Knights are the best team and they're going to run away with it, you know? So, um... Players, so many key players to watch. I am watching Shimmy Cohen on time this week. I am watching Eddie Harari, obviously. 
Michael Beta, obviously, but also there's a couple of others. Joey Cohen, the infielder. Um, there's a lot of players that I need to see this week and how they Jimmy do. Jimmy back in the league. Jimmy back in the league. Nice. Welcome back, Jimmy. You signed up on time this year. Um, and uh, I guess we'll see how it goes, so I cannot wait. Let's hope we get weather like this. They have a 50% chance of rain right now, uh, but hopefully, you know, it's 60 degrees on Sunday. Hopefully we get these games in because we want to get this season on the way. We had a great season last year, a phenomenal season the year before. Let's keep the streak going. YMSL 2021, Chief of Staff Sol Towel, who others say have a great softball mind. Is that, is that what they coined you as? I was, I was pegged as that. Great the, softball uh, mind. So does he have a great softball mind? Did he give you his great softball mindness over the uh, over the show today? I hope you did. He has a great softball mind. So thank you for joining us. And we will see how we do this upcoming Sunday. Good luck to all the teams. First pitch promptly, 9 a.m. Every game counts. Only five teams make the playoffs. So bring your A game from 9 a.m. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Norm.